Mr. Klein here uh, with our lesson defining engineering. Yes, what is engineering? We know what science is, but what is engineering? Why is it important? And what does it have to do with this machine that sharpens pencils for you? Let's go ahead and let's get started with this. So, engineering. Now, you hear the word engineering, but you aren't quite sure what it means. I mean, it sounds hard, so that's why you're like hyperventilating whenever you think of engineering. Or you might think of it's people doing crazy things, or could be one of many other things. I mean, you might hear engineering and think, oh, it's someone who works on engines or someone who designs engines. You might even know someone who's an engineer, but you've never asked them what they actually do. So let's, before we get into anything else, let's actually define engineering. Engineering is the process by which science is applied to create objects and solutions that solve problems that can make people's lives better. That's like a really long definition, but it's essentially using science to make things and solve problems. Whether it's been coming up with the wheel in years gone by, you know, and wagons, to today's advances in nanotechnology and robotics and computer science, engineering has always been a part of our civilization. So let's go ahead and let's start our graphic organizer here. Let's define engineering. And this is the definition we'll use in my class going forward. It's the process by which science is applied to create objects and solutions to make our lives better. And in our next section, we're going to actually define what are the major types of engineering and how they help us in our everyday lives. So there's hundreds of different fields of engineering, but historically, engineering has been divided into four large groups. And these groups are based on the types of problems that the engineers encounter, as well as the materials that they use in their solutions. So let's look at them one at a time. The first one is chemical engineering, or the application of science to create chemical processes for people to use. Now, a good example of chemical engineering is when engineers create new chemical processes and chemical compounds in order Order to create stronger plastic products or they use oil in order to create gasoline like at this oil refinery in Washington state. So let's go ahead and let's add to our organizer the types of engineering. Well the first one would be chemical engineering. So the next type of engineering is civil engineering. It's the application of science to create buildings and other structures for use by humans such as bridges, dams, tunnels, roads, other structures, even the house you live in. The science behind why your house doesn't collapse on top of you is actually civil engineering. So it goes all the way to big, huge bridges like this. This is the Sydney Harbor Bridge in Sydney, Australia. And yes, I took this picture. But the Sydney Harbor Bridge is a wonderful example of civil engineering. Let's add civil engineering to our graphic organizer. So we have chemical engineering and civil engineering. So the next one is electrical engineering. Electrical engineering is the application of science to create products that use or generate electricity. So anything involving electricity technically is within the field of electrical electrical engineering. So electrical engineers, they can create power plants, electric motors, cell phones, even computers. And they'll also use magnetism since magnetism and electricity are related to create electric motors like this. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our graphic organizer, electrical engineering. Now the final main field of engineering we want to talk about is mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering is the application of science to create machines such as aircraft engines, car engines, cars, even household products. Yeah, like a dryer. All of this stuff is in the field of mechanical engineering. So let's go ahead and let's add this and finish off this column of our organizer. Mechanical engineering is the other field. And the final one is that, you know, especially in the past century or so, you have new fields of engineering come up, including computer science and more specialized fields of like mechanical or electrical engineering. They combine them. Like for instance, aerospace engineering or even nuclear engineering. So things like airplanes can include mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, the metals it's built with can use chemical engineering. Creation of airports includes civil engineering. So all of this stuff works together within these fields of engineering. And in our next section, we're going to talk about how in all of these fields of engineering, how do the engineers solve the problems? How do engineers solve problems? Well, engineers have to do a lot of things in order to solve a problem. Mainly, they use math and scientific principles in order to solve the problems with the products that they create. So we can use math and science in order to solve the problem, but how do we know if the problem is solved with our solution? Well, engineers have to create products that have to be tested thoroughly to see if they properly solve the problem, or if it doesn't work, how could you make a better one? And a key component, and this is a big important thing right here, a key component of how engineers solve problems 
problems is actually through testing because repeated and detailed testing in their solutions is the only way you'll see if your idea is actually going to work. So with things like Boston Dynamics Mule that you can like kick the robot and it'll keep on walking, the only way engineers were able to figure out the solutions to this was through repeated testing. So let's start creating uh, a section of our organizer here. So what do engineering solutions require? Well, first off, they require science and math and also testing, but we're going to talk about in this section and the next section the actual skills that engineers have to use in order to solve their problems. So we know that engineers need science and math knowledge in order to test their solutions and come up with solutions. But what are the specific skills that will help engineers do this job? Well, this wide variety of skills are actually necessary for you in the classroom. So in this case, it's kind of like Mr. Klein not only telling you how to be a good engineer, but also be a good student. So some of the things engineers have to do is they have to break down a problem into smaller problems that can be solved individually. Sometimes the big problem is too big to solve on its own, but it becomes manageable once you break it down into smaller problems. And this concept of looking at problems and breaking them down and making them smaller are called analyzing problems. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our organizer. And the next one is the ability to solve problems by coming up with new solutions that others might not have thought of. If you got a problem and no one else can solve it, well, your idea to solve it is going to be the one that might work through testing. And that requires a good old bit of creativity and good old fashioned thinking. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our organizer. So engineering solutions require you to be creative. In addition to this, engineers have to have the ability to use science in ways that help people. You know, we have to look at our science knowledge and say, how can we use this to help people? How can we use this to solve problems? This is what engineers do. And finally, having to do with testing is the ability to try new things and figure out how things work and why they break whenever they don't work, you know? So like you can figure out that this might not be a good idea to do with your dryer. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our organizer. I know I talked about it in the last section, but this is the kind of summing up. So is the science and math, the analyzing the problems and being creative, all this ties into testing your solution once you come up with it. So in our last section, what we're going to do, you might have a good idea of engineering now, but the question you're probably asking yourself is, so what's the difference between science and engineering? Well, I'm going to answer that question in the next section. So while many people may think that science and engineering are the same thing, you now know that this just isn't true. And we have to look at the definitions of the two disciplines, science and engineering. You have to remember that science always seeks to explain how the universe works. Science is in interested in finding out how things work. Well, engineering is focused on using what we know about science, what we know about the physical universe, to make products that make our lives better. So that's the whole crux of it. Science explains how the world works, and engineering looks at how the world works and says, well, how can we use the universe to make our lives better? And this difference is why sometimes engineering is called applied science by some people, because engineering is just the application of what we know through science to make our life better. Yeah, you tell them, robots. So let's go ahead and finish our graphic organizer. What's the difference between science and engineering? So science explains how the natural world works, but engineering applies science to make our lives better. And that's the key thing. So let's finish up our lesson. Engineering is the process by which science is applied to create objects and solutions to make our lives better. We talked about the four main types of engineering, chemical, civil, electrical, and mechanical. And engineers use lots of different skills and ideas in order to create solutions. They'll use science and math and analyze problems and they're creative and they test their solutions to make sure they work. So there you go. That's the lesson. I hope you learned something and I hope you learned what engineering actually is. If and as always, you have any questions, please let me know and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.